a little bit of yin in our osteoporosis work. So we're going to start out just swinging the hips. We're going to do all 12 poses for osteoporosis from the original study. And you'll see how we start very yang, or some people call it yang. And this is very warming, working the muscles, getting into the joints. Go ahead and start to swing your hips around in little circles. And then we're gonna slowly get quieter and quieter and longer and longer holds. And we're gonna move the practice out of our muscles and deeper into the joints. And I'll be explaining to you how the yin can actually be really helpful for building bones. Go ahead and swing one foot and then the other. We're just trying to warm up the hips a little bit before we jump in, rolling the wrists around. You can start to stretch your arms out, finding mountain pose with your feet, lifting the arms straight up in the air. We're gonna just move the spine for a moment here, straight up and down first, take a deep breath. And slowly fold forward, stick your tailbone back, bend your knees and plant your hands on your thighs and stretch the tailbone back. This is our only forward fold here, but with a nice flat back and slowly rise up. We're gonna take the hands behind us and press into the waistband, open the heart. This is our cow pose, opening the heart, stretching the spine, good, deep breath. Come right back to center, lifting the arms one more time, and then leaning to one side, stretching out the body. You can drop the bottom hand if it feels better or keep the weight there. As you're breathing slowly, transitioning to the other side. You don't have to follow the breath here, just follow the curve of the spine. Unlock your knees, maybe rock heel to toe a little bit, roll your fingers, and right back up to center. The hands can come right down to the waist and we're gonna twist. I like to step my feet just slightly wider apart for this. As I turn my heart, keeping my belly button pointing forward, turning the heart to one side, you can look over your shoulder for a breath and then sliding through the center all the way to the other side, trying to keep the hips facing forward as the shoulders twist. And right back to center. And you can step the feet, marching a few times. You could even do a cross body tap, opposite hand to opposite thigh. Now we're ready to start our 12 movements or our 12 poses. So the first pose is tree pose. <laughs> That's usually where we end up, but we're going to start there today. I'm just going to hold on to a wall. You can have a chair, a table, anything you like nearby. First, stacking into mountain pose, deep breaths. Bending the knees just a little bit. You could add a little chair pose here. And then we're going to lean into the left foot, bend the right knee forward, open the knee and walk the foot maybe to the inner ankle or up to the calf or even grab hold of the foot and place it on the inner thigh up high. Really going where you wanna go. And we're gonna hold here for 30 seconds, breathing deeply. You might remember how many breaths you take. I'm just gonna take mine and we'll see how it goes. Stacking the body, pulling the belly in. One more breath and slowly step down, swing the hips, kick the feet a little, just allowing the body a moment of rest before we do the other side. Setting up for the other side of your tree pose, tall mountain first, lengthen the spine and then begin to lean into now the right leg, bending the left knee forward and opening it and placing the foot wherever you like it to go. One side, I can go higher than the other. Just be inside your own body, your own practice, and breathe. And wobble. <laughs> and one more deep breath. And slowly settling down, 
swinging the hips side to side. We're gonna step ourselves wider and wider into our wide angle poses. We have our three big poses here. We're gonna stack them one right after the other, but we're gonna hold them each for 30 seconds. So if you need a break in between, please feel free to do that. Edges of the feet are parallel to those short ends of the mat. Feet are in line with each other. We're just gonna turn one foot out. I'm gonna turn my right toes out and bend into the right knee, setting up for warrior two. The back foot might kick back a little bit and the arms rise up for our 30 seconds of breath. You can look straight ahead, lining head, heart and pelvis in line with each other, or you can turn your head and keep breathing pressing into the feet, enjoying the warming, the using of the muscles, the squeezing of the bones. I'm gonna take one more breath. I'll drop the back hand down and begin to bend the front elbow so that the forearm or the hand comes to the thigh as I lean sideways into side angle pose. Opening the top shoulder, rolling it back. I might add the arm, keeping the knee bent. Oh, get a cramp. <laughs> Come in and out when you need to and go back into your side angle for those 30 seconds of breath. You can always add a little mudra to that bottom hand. One more breath. And the top hand again can float down as you press your hand, your palm into the thigh as you straighten the knee. Your shoulders are still leaning toward those front toes, leaning into your triangle pose. You might also reach with the bottom hand out for the wall that's in front of those toes, never touching it and maybe let the hand drop, the other arm can rise up. Keep breathing. Kind of gently unlock the knees just a little bit. Let's take one more breath. Top hand floats down, the knee starts to bend and we can push off of that thigh and turn the toes forward. We're going to step all the way together. You can heel toe, pausing in the middle. <laughs> Let those hips rest. Nice. Keep breathing, gently swinging those hips. Hopefully you're starting to warm up a little bit, starting to step your feet wider and wider apart. Let's take a momentary forward fold here. You don't have to go very far to feel the weight of the torso held in the pelvis and the legs. Just leaning forward. This stretch is much more about the back of the legs and the back of the torso. Leaning strong, holding the belly and rising up, a little bend in the knees. We're going to turn the other toes out, left toes now toward that short end of the mat, bending into the knee. You might kick the back heel slightly back and then add the arms and we'll begin our 30 seconds of breath. Check your alignment, hands, shoulders in line. One more breath. Dropping the back hand, we bend the front elbow and place the hand or the forearm on the thigh as we lean in that direction, opening the top shoulder and adding that arm back in if it feels right. Reaching Gently imagining that you can spread the feet apart, that you can stretch the mat between the feet, keeping that engagement strong. One more breath. 
Top hand floats down to the hip as you push into the thigh, straightening the knee, keeping your torso leaning, opening the shoulders top on top still, as if you're leaning back against the wall and add the arms back in if it sounds good or feels right. Keep on breathing slow and steady. One more breath, or maybe you're already done. Slowly bending the knee, rising up and stepping the feet slowly together. Maybe heel toe. <sighs> nice, strong work. I kind of like the idea that there's a relaxing part of the class coming. We're gonna get to have a good rest, but not quite yet. <laughs> We're gonna walk up to the top of the mat. Roll your shoulders a little bit. Maybe give yourself a little hug and rock a little. We just want to make sure everything is nice and lubricated. Slowly stepping into mountain once again. Nice deep breaths. Bending the knees a few times to warm and stretch the calves, the Achilles. Bending the knees just a little, we're going to lean into the left foot and step back with the right. Dropping that right heel all the way to the floor, make sure that it touches the ground. Front knee is bent, but don't go past your toes, make sure you can still see them. We're going to then lean forward on a nice diagonal, trying to keep shoulders, hips, and heel all in one line. Push into that front foot, we're going to move into our twist here, crossing Opposite hand over to that front thigh, opening the top shoulder, squeezing the thighs together, but then pushing into the knee, pushing into the back heel. Keep breathing. See if you can let your neck kind of lean a little, your head, so everything is all in one beautiful line right through your middle. And of course, this is wobbly. Keep pushing into the floor, keep squeezing the thighs, grab hold of something if you need it, and we'll take two more breaths. Slowly turn forward and step up and release. <laughs> I'm going to walk all the way to the other end of the mat so I can still see you in my twist. You can stay right where you are and just go the other way. Just take your time, slowly rolling the shoulders a little, moving the hips a little, settling into mountain pose. And then the knees bend a few times, evening it out. This time we're gonna lean into the right foot and set back with the left. Drop that left heel down. Double check your feet are not on the same line. Make sure they're still hips width apart, even while they're one in front of the other. Good. And lean slightly forward. Stretch the diagonal out from that back heel. Push into that floor behind you. And then feel the weight of the body leaning into that ball of the foot and cross the opposite hand over to the thigh. Twisting, front knee can stay bent, or of course it can always straighten out. Follow your breath. I'm gonna take one more breath. Turning slowly forward and stepping up. <sighs> ah, yes, the warmth of the work in the back and the glutes, that feels pretty good. We're gonna take our time slowly folding forward, stepping down to the mat. You can step to a down dog or table pose, maybe a child's pose, and then we're all the way down onto our belly. So we're just gonna take a, take a trip here. I'm gonna start with the knees quite bent, tailbone stretching back, leaning forward slightly long spine. You can lay the belly down on the thighs and reach for the floor. You can let your head and shoulders hang just a little bit of a forward fold stretch. And then leaning into the hands, step back into table or down dog. Take a deep breath. Maybe a cat cow. 
starting to crawl the knees back and come down toward the elbows, onto the floor, onto your belly. Hmm. You can stay in Sphinx pose for a breath if it feels right. Straightening out the legs, rocking on the tops of the feet, widening the arms and coming all the way down to rest, maybe on your chin or your forehead. We're moving toward locust pose. And you know there's so many different variations here. You can just do arms, just do legs. You can do them together. You can do opposites. <laughs> I'm just going to keep my arms in a cactus and start to lift the shoulders off the floor, lifting the arms off the floor, squeezing the glutes. I'm going to begin to lift the legs and count those six breaths for me, 30 seconds, however many that counts for you. Take one more breath and relax if you're not already there. <sighs> Softening, letting the body let go. Starting to rock the heels a little bit, maybe rock the hips a little bit. You can start to crawl your elbows back onto the floor and then maybe start to tuck them in toward your ribs as you push your buns off the ground, push the belly up, rock back and forth a few times in your shoulders just to feel that stretch. And then all the way to table, hands flat, fingers spread, cat and cow. We are making our way into our seated twists. So we're just gonna crawl the knees forward. I'll grab something to sit on. And we start with the legs stretched out, staff pose, dandasana, rock those feet a little bit. Hopefully you're starting to feel like, yeah, I've been doing some yoga. <laughs> That's good. And we're just going to bend one knee. I'm going to bend my right knee up. And first I'm just going to keep it on the inside of my leg so I can walk the hip back. The long leg hip walks forward a little bit, and then I might choose to keep my foot on the inside or cross it over. I'm already turning into my twist. You can also diagonal that bottom leg kind of out of the way and begin to breathe nice and tall up and down the spine, shoulders relaxing away from the ears, looking straight ahead or starting to walk your eyes over your back shoulder. Make sure you flatten up the foot of the long leg. Engage with the floor a little bit with the back of your leg and the sole of the foot that's connected to that bent knee and take two more breaths. Turning slowly back, we're gonna uncross the leg and stretch it out. We'll do the other side. Rock a little, bend a little. <laughs> And then bend up this new leg. We're gonna slide out through the long leg, shifting the hips out of square and turning toward the bent knee. You can decide to keep the foot inside or cross it over, moving that bottom leg over when you need to and breathing deeply. Push out through the heel of the long leg. Connect with the floor with your other leg so there's a little bit of engagement. One more breath. And unwind. <sighs> I'm gonna bend my knees and rock a little. Make sure you're still leaning back so your low back stays safe. Good, and we're just gonna go a little deeper. You can do that same twist again, or you can Fold the under leg. So I like to start by folding that in. My knees are bent, feet on the floor. I'm gonna tuck my left foot under and then cross the right leg over. That top, right knee is right in front of me there. And I'm gonna turn my hips a little bit away from each other. I always want the hip that's connected to that top knee, the front knee to scoot back. That hip scoots back, okay? And then we're in the twist. <laughs> 
Keep breathing, counting those breaths. One more breath. Turning forward. I'm gonna stretch my legs out wide just to get a little variation in the hip joint there. Maybe rock forward and back a few times. Get that inner leg stretch. And then slowly bending both knees again, feet on the floor. Now I'm tucking my right foot under and then crossing the left leg on top, scooting that left hip back a little bit. I'm starting that twist from the base of the spine, counting the breath again. One more deep breath here. Turning forward. We can slide into butterfly, lift the heart, tip the tailbone, squeeze the shoulder blades. You can press the soles of the feet together just a little bit and relax. We're gonna make our way onto our back. Make sure you can reach your strap and your block if you want it. We are going to begin our yin work now we're still in a little bit of the yang so laying down on your side and then rolling the knees up scooting the hips to the middle of the mat you have some choices here you could stay in more of that yang energy of work by doing your bridge pose without a block or you could shift right now into your yin practice practicing the supported bridge sliding the block under your hips whenever you like so I'm just gonna set us up. We're just tucking the shoulder blades under. You might need another moment of rocking the knees a little bit. Just settling the low back. We want that little tiny curve in the lumbar spine still. Just a little sliver of light shining under there. Tailbone is down, connected to the floor at first, walking the feet to where we like them, tucking the shoulder blades back. We begin to lift and settle into our bridge pose. You might be sliding a block under. And I'd like to hold this for a full minute. This is our transition pose from our Hatha into our Yin. Just breathing. And you know you can come in and out of the pose. Bone is already beginning to be built after the first 10 seconds. Going much past the 60 second mark doesn't make much difference. As usual, it's a, it's a balancing point. Somewhere between 30 and 60 seconds, your bones are being nicely strengthened. Maybe another breath or two. Settling down, relaxing for several deep breaths. And now the yin truly begins. I'm gonna take my strap. We're moving into our hamstring stretches. This is sometimes the way that we start our 12 poses class, but we're gonna slide them in here. I'm gonna just wrap the strap around my right foot and let my left foot be on the floor. Knee can be bent at first. And the strap knee is quite bent as well. And we'll begin with about 30 seconds of engagement, pushing the foot into the strap, gently pulling down on the strap. And then we're going to soften into the yin part of the pose, allowing everything to relax. So first we count that 30 seconds of breath. The other leg can stay bent or stretch out eventually. That 
that's about 30 seconds for me of that engaged posture. Now I'm going to move into relaxed, relaxed posture. So I'm going to lengthen the strap, let the foot kind of hang in it, let the knee be soft. There's really very little work going on here. And then you'll move into your stretch, gently pulling the foot a little closer, just so you start to wake up the hamstrings. You can walk the hands up too and kind of let them, the weight of the arms kind of hang on the strap. Just breathing slow and deep. This should feel quite different from that powerful engagement. Now we're much more into the yin. We're letting go of the muscle work and letting the stretch go into the hip, go into the beautiful joints. We'll be here for about a minute and a half. Just breathing. You guys stay there and I want to just read you about this practice. I got this information from a website called Yin Sights, <laughs> Y-I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S. It says, after 50 is when we need to do more yin exercise and less yang, but not all. <laughs> yin exercise is late in later life will help stress the bones and hydrate the body. There are two keys though. If a student does have osteopenia or osteoporosis, they should definitely ask their doctors if it's okay to do the practice of yin. And when they practice yin, it is best not to go too deep too early and always listen to the body and at any sign of pain, back off. Always good advice. <laughs> Take one more deep breath. And just bending the knee, let the foot float down. You can take the strap off and let the body rest for a moment, maybe rocking the knee or even stretching the leg out side by side. We're just taking that pause that is so important in our yin practice. We lean much more heavily into the rest and away from the working. Let's take a few deep belly breaths. And we'll bend in the other knee and wrap the strap around the left foot for the first part of our pose. The first, we go into that 30 second engagement. Pressing into the strap with the foot, pulling down gently with the arm, adding the weight and squeezing those muscles to the bone. Squeeze your glute. Make sure you still have that tiny little arch in the low back so the tailbone is tipping down. Keep the breathing strong and steady. And the other leg could stretch out if you want it to. Just two more breaths here. starting to relax the hold, maybe a little more bend in the knee. Feel free to move slightly as you settle into the yin form of this pose. A little bit, a lot less engagement in the low back and in the musculature of the leg. Things are going soft. And you can just kind of watch as the pose changes into a stretch for the joints. The body continually creates bone and absorbs bone. Up until our mid 20s to mid 30s, we generally gain bone mass. If we exercise conscientiously, we can continue to maintain or even add bone mass past those early years of life. However, eventually the balance is tilted more and more in the opposite direction and we start to lose bone density. It's just a fact of life, and this condition has become known as osteopenia, or in more severe cases, osteoporosis. This condition is more common in women than, than men, especially women approaching and during menopause.
We're just gonna be here for three or four more breaths, really allowing the body to stretch deeply and soften everywhere else. One more deep breath. Slowly bending the knee, sliding the strap off. You can rebend the other leg or lay this leg down beside the long leg. Just take your time. Go where you want to go. That is what we call hand to toe pose number one, <laughs> variation number one. And we of course use a strap just to allow the neck and the shoulders not to strain. Now we're moving into variation number two, hand to toe variation number two. We're gonna let the leg go wide. So I'm gonna turn slightly so that you can see how wide I go. You don't have to even pay attention to me. You can just pay attention to your body. My wall is just in my way. <laughs> So I'm going to pick up my right knee and place that right foot in the strap. The other leg can stay bent. I actually prefer it bent on this pose so that I can open it wide as I start to open the strap leg wide. Now remember, we're starting off with our 30 seconds of engaged pressure, a little bit of push into the strap, a little bit of pulling back, and we'll take our 30 seconds of breath here. Feel the back gently pushing into the floor, especially the tailbone. One more breath. And then we're softening slightly, letting the back relax, letting the knee bend a little bit. We might even place a hand on the outside of that thigh to help support the weight of the leg, maybe holding the strap with one hand and not the other. We're trying to see how many places we can let go of for our next, the yin part of this pose. One estimate suggests that 10 million Americans suffer from osteoporosis and another 34 million suffer from osteopenia or low bone mass, which leads to osteoporosis. This weakening results in almost one and a half million bone fractures each year, with the majority of them occurring in the low back. Other common sites for breakage are the wrists and the hips, all of these areas with higher trabercular bone compared to cortical bone. Just a little bit of science there for you. <laughs> and we have about 30 seconds left here, just letting the body soften. Of course, you're welcome to adjust or even take a break out of the pose if you need that. Trying to keep both sides of the back connected to the ground at all times so we're not twisting. Let's just take one more deep breath. We're going to gently lift the leg up and we're going to roll over into a twist. You can keep the strap on the foot if you like and let the leg stretch out or you could slide the strap off and bend the knee and just roll into your expression of a knee over twist. The bottom leg going where it feels good, settling the shoulders, see if you can adjust so that the shoulders can both be touching the floor. This is not one of the 12 poses. This is a fun added pose, what I call a bonus pose. <laughs> Keep breathing. I'm gonna adjust back onto my mat. Just enjoy your twist. Eventually, 50% of all women and 25% of all men in North America will develop osteoporosis. 50% of women, 25% of men. 
This usually starts just before menopause for the women and over a four to eight year period thereafter, women begin to lose bone density. For a variety of reasons, osteoblast bone creating activity may diminish or osteoclast bone absorption activity may increase causing osteoporosis. A lack of vitamin D or calcium can cause bone degeneration and certainly hormone deficiencies such as testosterone, estrogen, or parathyroid hormones can also contribute to bone loss. So too can immobilization or lack of use. Just keep breathing. Let that information soak in. You can, of course, you can roll a little if you need to. Let the body enjoy this long, slow stretch. And let's just take two more breaths in the twist. Take a deep breath in and on your exhale, gather the knees and rock them up, roll onto your back and let your body rest for a few deep breaths. And we're going to do that slow sequence on the other side, on the other side of our other leg. So I'm gonna take the strap, pull my left foot up and put it in the strap. You can also just hold on to the leg. We're gonna move into that first part, the engagement part where we're pressing into the strap and pulling gently down. The other knee can stay bent for a while or it can slowly stretch out. We wanna make sure there's that tiny little curve in the low back here, tailbone rocks slightly forward or down into the floor. Keep breathing. Let's take one more breath in the engagement portion and start to soften. We can start with the glutes and the low back, letting them relax, maybe lengthening the strap a little bit and finding the edge of a hamstring stretch, Just trying to let go wherever we can, keeping the breath steady and slow. The bones need to be stressed to remain healthy and the stress needs to be appropriate. In yin yoga, we have the opportunity to, <laughs> let me start again. Yin yoga provides compressive stress on the bones. I like that, compressive stress, we're compressing. Especially the lumbar spine. Other forms of yoga also stress the bones. Most standing postures do this. In yin yoga, the stresses are held longer, allowing the bones more time to be stressed. And this generates a larger recovery response. The bones having been stressed longer will grow stronger. Very few active yoga postures will stress the lumbar bones like yin yoga does. See if your body wants to go a little deeper, you can use the strap to slowly stretch the back of the leg a little more. Or maybe you're happy right where you are. Just breathe. We're going to take about three more deep breaths. Let's re-bend the other leg. Start to bend the knee that the strap is on, but I'm gonna keep the strap on the knee, bend it a few times, and move a little more quickly into my wide foot position here. I'm just gonna take a moment to make sure I've got some juice in the knee, rolling that joint around a little bit. The other knee is bent, foot flat on the floor, and I'm gonna to start to open both legs, coming into the first part of this pose to stress 
and press and engage for 30 seconds, both sides of the back remaining flat on the ground, maybe even a tiny little curve away from the floor so that if someone was shining a flashlight, there would be a tiny sliver of light right under your low back because you're lifting it slightly. Keep pressing and breathing. Balancing out the work in your shoulders. One more engaged breath. And then we're softening, letting the low back soften. Maybe moving the legs a little bit. Settling into the yin portion of this pose. Trying to let go wherever we can. Maybe even propping up under that leg with the hand or a block to help out a little bit of support so the muscles can do a little less work here. Let's move our breath into the belly. Make sure you can still feel those toes. Your head could go anywhere you like. Keep relaxing over and over, especially the back the legs. We'll take one more deep breath. Begin to lift the leg, a little bend in the knee, feels good. And we're gonna just gently roll it over into the twist. We're holding these yin shapes for about two minutes. A little more, a little less, give or take. Now each side of your body feels a little different when you're in an asymmetrical shape. Like the other side of my twist usually feels a little different from this side. So you might need different props. You might need a little different position. You can always scoot the hips if you need to. And just play with where you feel your breath or where you feel sensation in the body. Body awareness is such an integral part of yoga, but it's not, it doesn't always come naturally. We can't automatically get our brain to connect with our bodies. Usually the best way to find a connection is with our breath because we know we're breathing. That's in our head and our body is breathing. That's in the body. And then when we start to synchronize the thought with the action, we're beginning to feel that connection. Sometimes if we're in a stress, in that fight, flight, or freeze, we can have a harder time connecting with our bodies and that's okay. The body needs time to slowly relax. And sometimes that stress response will reside in one part of the area, in one part of the body, one area of the body more than another. For example, if you have pain somewhere, then that part of the body is probably gonna be in freeze. And so it'll be very hard to relax. Just slide over that part of the body, let it be and relax where you can. Let's take two more breaths here. Gently and slowly coming out of the twist. Taking those deep breaths, rocking a little. I'm gonna take several deep breaths in each position as I slowly roll over and then onto my belly. 
So I'm gonna take a few breaths in seed pose, letting the body slowly soften back to neutral. If you can still feel the twist, it's not time to adjust quite yet. It's time to rest a little longer. And slowly rolling onto the tummy. You could also maybe slide a blanket up under your belly if that feels good to you. We're going to roll into Sphinx pose. This is a wonderfully therapeutic yin posture for osteoporosis, osteopenia in the low back. And when I say therapeutic, I mean it can be like medicine. <laughs> and sometimes medicine doesn't taste very good. So sometimes a low back stretch like this can be very uncomfortable. It's very important not to rest in a place where you feel pain. If you need a little lower, you can walk the elbows forward. If you need it to go just a little more deeply, you can always walk the elbows in a little closer to your body. We're gonna rest here for two or maybe even three minutes. And we're gonna practice a little bit of gratitude here. I have two different gratitude meditations here for our yin practice. I like to keep our minds busy, our hearts open. But at any time, if you feel like you're having to force yourself to focus on a meditation, just let that go. There's no need to manhandle our little brains and force them to do things when they need breaks. Sometimes they just need to float away, disassociate a little bit. <laughs> just breathing. If you're interested, you could begin to think about your life and a few things that you are grateful for. Maybe just looking around the room, the things you can see and maybe smell or touch or hear. Tuning into your senses, you can just notice these things. And as you notice them, you can say, I'm so grateful for and name that thing. And keep breathing. You can stay in Sphinx pose for the next minute, completing our 30, our three, our three minutes of relaxation here. Or you might want to go a little higher. You might spread your fingers out wide, widen the palms out toward the corners of the mat, lift the shoulders a little, bend in the elbows and deep in the stretch. This is optional. It really won't work for everyone. So just let yourself be right where you are. Maybe tune your ears in to something you can hear. I can hear my air conditioning turning off. I'm so grateful for my air conditioning turning off and on in the summer. <laughs> Taking two more deep breaths. Softly relaxing back down out of your back bend into a nice flat back. Sometimes simply laying flat on your belly is nice and therapeutic. Getting that rounding curve out of the spine. We're going to take three or four deep belly breaths. And then in whatever time you choose, you can move slowly back to table and then a wide knee child's pose, keeping the hips pretty high when you get there. Just watch to make sure when you settle into your child's pose that there's no rounding in the back. We're not going to reach our arms back at all. We're going to keep our arms forward. 
but feel free to bend the elbows and maybe make a little pillow for your forehead or rest your forehead on a blanket or a block, keeping the back long. We'll be here for about two minutes. And we'll move now from our gratitude meditation into a loving kindness meditation, or they call it metta, compassion meditation. When we develop positive emotions like contentment and gratitude and love, you are less likely to be overwhelmed by negative emotions like frustration, anxiety, or anger. You're still gonna feel them, but they might not be as overwhelming. Practicing loving kindness can add to the healing process of the body, mind, and spirit. But let it be easy. Let yourself go. Be loving toward yourself first. We watch our breath as it goes in and out of the body, focusing on that movement. We begin by thinking about remembering and feeling what it's like to be loved. Beginning to generate loving kindness by feeling it first in ourselves. What does it feel like to be loved unconditionally, to be seen and heard, to be validated, to be loved? Feeling that love, we offer to ourselves first the mantra, may I be well, healthy, and strong. May I be happy. And may I abide in peace. Transitioning slowly out of child's pose, moving yourself into Shavasana. Just go really slow moving piece by piece, relaxing on your back. You can put your legs up or let your legs stretch out or bend the knees. Just let the body settle. Focusing back on the rhythm of the breath. Letting each exhale Allow the body to get a little heavier, a little looser. And as you rest in your Shavasana, we'll just move through our loving kindness meditation. Still feeling that generating love in our own hearts, we're gonna to begin to widen the circle. Sending that feeling outward, bringing to mind someone you love, someone it's easy to rejoice for, someone you like <laughs> and respect. Sending them these feelings of warmth and care, wishing them well. Saying to them in your mind, may you be well, healthy and strong. May you be happy. May you abide in peace. Keep letting the love spread, your loving kindness and compassion flowing from you. Begin to broaden the circle of compassion to someone you might feel neutral about. Saying to them in your mind, may you be well, healthy and strong. May you be happy and may you abide in peace. When and if you feel ready, you can send love, kindness, and compassion to someone who is a challenge to you. Someone who is a little bit hard to love. Saying to them in your mind, may you be well, healthy, and strong. May you be happy. May you abide in peace. And finally, 
enveloping the entire world with your love, including everything, every person, every plant and animal, saying, may all beings be well, healthy and strong. May all beings be happy. May all beings abide in peace. Slowly but surely bringing that focus once again onto yourself. Maybe even focusing it right on the center of your chest, feeling the loving kindness filling you up, spreading out from your chest to your arms, down your torso, into your legs, all the way to your toes and your fingertips and then also to the crown of your head, feeling yourself wrapped in love and kindness, breathing in peacefully, breathing out peacefully. Allow the feeling of loving kindness to float around you, focusing back on your breath, whispering to yourself, may I be well, healthy and strong. May I be happy. May I abide in peace. Take a deep breath in. Fill your entire torso with breath from your hips to your shoulders. Hold on to that breath. Maybe stretch your fingers a little bit. And when you're ready to let it go, open your mouth and sigh it out. <sighs> Wiggling and stretching and slowly waking up again. Just breathing deeply for a, a moment or two and taking your time to come back to life again. <sighs> I'm so interested to hear how this practice felt. As we close together, leaving the hands in the lap or maybe bringing them to the heart, we bow to that place inside of us of goodness and compassion. And then we let it go. And we say to ourselves and to each other, Namaste. Thank you.